Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, Come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today, which is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 to 2 and then from verses 10 to 14. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offence when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us through this passage of Scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Clare. Then the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. You've probably heard the story of the little girl who's in the kitchen on a Sunday watching her mum begin to prepare the Sunday dinner. And she watches as her mum carefully cuts both ends off the ham before it goes in the oven to cook. The little girl says to her mum, curious, Mum, why do you do that every time you cook a ham? And her mum said, well, I'm not entirely sure. It's how my mum taught me to cook a ham. It must be something to do with helping the juices to be absorbed better in the cooking. Tell you what, next time we see Granny, why don't you ask her? So next time they saw Granny, the little girl said, Granny, why did you cut both ends off the ham before you put it in the oven to cook? Granny said, well, because that's the way my mum taught me to do it, so it must be the right way. Why don't you ask great granny next time you see her? So next time the little girl sees great granny, she says, great granny, I've seen granny and mummy cutting both ends off the ham before they, they put it in the oven. Why do they do that? Great granny laughs. And she says, oh, sweetheart, I've always done it that way. Because when I was a young woman cooking Sunday dinner for the family, I never had a big enough pan to fit a whole ham in. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. I'm sure that just as there were good reasons originally 
or cutting the ends off the ham, there were and still are very good reasons for washing your hands before you eat. But sometimes the reasons the elders did things are not reasons that stand true any longer. And we get to the stage where it is not just wise, but important, crucial perhaps, that we think about doing things differently. Well, far be it from me in a time of global pandemic to encourage anybody not to wash their hands before eating. But it isn't always necessary, is it, to keep doing things the same way just because that's the way we've always done them. This time for the church as a whole is a time of crisis and the word crisis doesn't just mean a disaster, it also means an opportunity, a time when we can look at things and decide, assess our priorities. Is this a time for us to think about doing things differently? Breaking the tradition of the elders, perhaps. And Jesus says, challenging those Pharisees, yes. Because what is more important than the tradition of the elders is honouring the commandment of God. And sometimes that will require us to do things in a radically different way. The church is having to ask all sorts of difficult, searching questions about how we do mission, about how we manage our finances, about how we look forwards in faith to the future God has prepared for us. And I wonder whether there may be some aspects of our own lives where we need to be asking the same questions too. Are there things which we're still doing just because that's the way we've always done them? And the bottom line is, are those things honouring simply to tradition? Or are they honouring to God? Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, Remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord, free us from all that defiles us, from selfishness, intolerance and greed, from all that stops us being the people you want us to be. Fill us with your spirit of grace and truth. Renew us in faith and love, so that we may reveal your love and mercy to all the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, give clear vision and right priorities to all who are called to leadership in our world. Give them a sense of direction that leads to peace and well-being for all people and builds up our communities in love. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we pray for those who suffer at the hands of others, for victims of violence, injustice, and exploitation, for those living in abusive relationships, for those led astray into crime and addiction, for those rejected and marginalised by society. Help us to heal the harm done to them so that they may know themselves to be loved, valued and accepted. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next upload or visit the Cathedral's website. The information is on the screen. Now may God bless you and watch over you and those you love this day and always.